<laughs> it is time for our first hot topic and a tropical storm watch remains in effect for Anna Maria and areas north as now upgraded category two Hurricane Michael treks north in the Gulf. Now while the Sun Coast will escape the worst winds, rain and storm surge, scientists at Moat Marine are watching how the hurricane could impact the red tide bloom. Now Moat believed that we were seeing some red tide improvement in these past couple weeks, but now the hurricane could stir things up again. Question is for good or for bad. Offshore winds around Michael will initially push the algae away, but it could get shoved back on shore after the storm passes. Moat scientists say they are watching. I find it so interesting with all the, the, you know, the knowledge at Moat and all the history of hurricane circulation and tide, we still don't know how yeah. it interacts with yeah. red tide. It's like groundbreaking what's happening, but yet we're all very nervous watching. And we've always heard that a hurricane would take away the red tide. Mm -hmm. That's just common knowledge, but turns out that may not be true at all. Right. So we're learning a lot from this outbreak, I think. And it's interesting time in both cycles, right? Because you have, we're, we're now coming off of a very, you know, quiet hurricane cycle for several right. years, which I was very happy to be a part of for those. And uh, and now our red tide has gone longer. So it's, it's interesting to see them both kind of come together in this mm -hmm. little Venn diagram of more red tide, more later hurricane. I, I don't know about anybody else, but I kind of thought when we were all talking about it, it's been a year since Irma, I kind of thought it was over, oh, you know, no, yes, I, no. I let my guard down. <laughs> yes. Our friends in the panhandle don't feel that way. No, and it could do anything. Well, right now we could we could have much more effect from it than we are, we are looking at right now. And hurricanes spin up in September and October all the time. The bigger issue is they tend to spin up very quickly. That's a normal late season okay. hurricane is they gain strength rapidly because the water's warm. I mean, think about how warm it's been this month. Yeah. It's been setting records all the time. That means the the Gulf is very warm, which means it allows more activity. On so. the last day of hurricane season a couple of years ago, we had a hurricane. Wow. Of no. course, it didn't come here, but we were threatened, so we were worried about it. I've had friends, I don't know about you, but I've had friends from other parts of the state and even up north that are like, hey, we're trying to come down. We're trying to plan. Do you know, is, is the red tide getting better or worse? And I was like, we don't know, and we're right here. I, I mean, know. I can't mm -hmm. help you. Yeah, no, it's really difficult. Cause I, like, we're not scientists, because yeah. I do vacation rentals on Siesta Key. And I said, you know, I, I try to walk the beach every morning, and it's getting mm. so much better, but it's still spotty in certain areas. Mm -hmm. So I just keep telling people, you know, give me a call back in a couple of weeks, and you know, just right, go we'll day just by day, because that's really what yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this plan. is the end as the hurricane goes. That's what I'm hoping. Maybe, the hurricane, maybe. red tide's gone, and let's have some yes. fall weather. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let's have it all improve <laughs> at <laughs> once. <laughs> well, certainly our uh, thoughts and prayers with everybody up in the panhandle, and I know a lot of people with friends and family up there very worried as we go through the next couple of days. Well, if you go to Venice, Italy, you better take your walking shoes because it may cost you to sit down. The Venice mayor is proposing an almost $600 fine on tourists who sit down in certain public places. This is part of the city's campaign against rampant over tourism. Other Italian cities also taking extreme measures. People are prohibited from sitting in tourist hot spots in St. Mark's Square. In Florence, it'll cost you 500 if you're caught snacking on the street. And on the island of Sardinia, if you're caught stealing sand, it could cost you three thousand dollars. Wow. Should they be careful what they wish for? <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. I was insulted by this. If That's I'm going to come spend money church. in your area, I do not want to be treated poorly. No, and when you when go to Italy, you <laughs> walk like you. That's what you want to do. So when you get to some of these places that are beautiful, yeah, you sit. You do you sit. You want to stop so for a minute, please. And graze. <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> and I if I want to walk <laughs> and graze, I don't want to be <laughs> fined in Florence. I can't afford to go there now. I, I couldn't before, but now I can't because I can't afford <laughs> all the fines. It I reminds me of Five Points Park a little bit, though, because remember they just took the benches away like well, well if we just let people not sit then they won't but hang that out there was it because yeah. of tourists <laughs> no but, <laughs> but it's that same idea problem. of like well we're not going to say you can't come we're just going to make you very uncomfortable while you're here <laughs> it's a very passive aggressive uh, family thing but <laughs> they so <laughs> depend on the tourist dollar as do we absolutely that's we're not like taking our benches that's away. like us saying you can't sit on the beach it's too crowded yes, yes. yes. you <laughs> must keep moving <laughs> what? but then i have been in some of these tourist spots where you're body to body i've heard you can't even see what's on the sides mm -hmm. and and that's certainly no fun. But so were you sorry you went? Eat? No. See? <laughs> no. That's the point. No, but I could stop in most. Couldn't eat on the street in China, but in most Why places. Why is that? It's Crowd? bad manners. Oh, well, that's oh. a little it's different. It's not acceptable, huh. uh, I was told. 
and I didn't, I didn't tempt that theory. <laughs> <laughs> this might all just be though to get you to sit down in a cafe and spend money, because look, they don't want you to sit in public, and they don't want you to eat as you're walking, oh, so they want point. you to sit and eat and spend the money, which I'm just as happy to do. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> I'm on vacation spending money. Makes Let you want to sit more, doesn't That's, it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> be a rebel. Sit. All right, here's a good question for all the moms out there and dads. How old is too old to trick or treat? Well, people in Chesapeake, Virginia have their answer, and if you break the rule, you could get jail time. Trick or treat hours will be held from 6 to 8 p.m. for children 12 and under. Yes, this mom agrees. <laughs> Anyone over that age will be guilty of a misdemeanor. They could face a $25 to $100 fine. Okay, the last part is ridiculous. Or confinement in jail for not more than six months. Or both, what? jail and oh. fine. Now let's assume we're just scaring with the jail time because I think the parents would flip out. <laughs> but what do we think about the teenage trick or treat? Oh, I think they have a right to trick or treat. They like it more <laughs> than the little kids, I think. They spend hours on costumes and going together. They used to come to my house uh, on- The uh, teenagers? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, on South Shore Drive, we used to get a lot of teenagers. And mm -hmm. they were so much fun. I don't know, don't you though sometimes see a kid or even worse, an adult trick or treating, you're like, did you bring a child? What are you doing here? <laughs> like now it's just creepy. Well, yeah, You're standing weird. there with a pillowcase at my door. That's that's beyond creepy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I guess I sort of feel that way about teenagers, but I know mine just want candy. Yeah. So they're willing to put on a costume to just go get free candy. I mean, free would be the key word we'll when you're We'll do a anything in our neighborhood to get trick-or-treaters because we don't get them. We're on the mm -hmm. opposite, where Tuttle divides our house, so they're all um, in like Arlington Park mm -hmm. area. So we have no trick-or-treaters, and I'm like, please, Oh, come let's up. all go to Joy's house. Yeah. I was going to say, right. you can you come can house sit for me. Perfect. Oh, I would Come house sit for me on Halloween, and that would solve a lot of problems. Right, done. So. <laughs> Tracy, you're going to let your teenager trick or treat? Well, I was just thinking, we went to Spirit Halloween on Sunday, and this was the first time that Aiden didn't buy a costume. And he was oh. okay with that? Oh. I let him buy the baby mask, you know, that creepy baby yeah. mask. So he's going to hand out candy with the creepy baby oh, mask that's on. Good. But it was the first That'll year. That'll be good for sad. the small children. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 Scare him away. There's a creepy baby <laughs> at our door. <laughs> All right, this is a little gross. You know the old adage, does a bear poop in the woods? Well, apparently the question should be, does a human? And unfortunately, the answer is yes, <laughs> and the national parks are not pleased. This is mortifying. So Vice News reports numerous hikers who are totally over coming across other hikers' business when trying to enjoy the beauty of their nature walk. So the parks are working to educate hikers on the proper stewardship of public land. Their mother should have taught them this. <laughs> and also to educate that our own waste is not as biodegradable Ooh. as you think. Ew. All right, can I say <laughs> <laughs> that this my is trainer, a big problem? <laughs> my trainer climbs mountains, like has, has takes right. trips on mountains. Whatever you bring up, whatever you bring up, you have to bring down mm -hmm. in little baggies. So imagine climbing up a mountain and then having to bring down all of Everything. your garbage. Well, but waste. I guess bringing it down is better than me <laughs> finding it when I hike up because exactly. I'm going to throw well, up. That's what I'm saying. Like they're <laughs> climbing a mountain and they take their waste out. Like these people that are camping, like, mm -hmm. you know, that's gross. Take, right. your, take everything with Can't you. Can't you bury it or something? I don't, I don't know. know about burying it. It'd have to be six feet down. Stay in a hotel. <laughs> How's that? I mean, this obviously <laughs> can't be a new problem. People have been living off the land for, you, you know, centuries. It's well, the hordes of people, There's though. more people and we're not... <laughs> Yeah. There's not less land, that's what it is. It's, it's not a problem <laughs> I wanted to know existed. So do you like sleeping with a fan on? You know, that nice, cool breeze, or maybe it's the white noise. Well, either way, we're keeping it a little chilly in the bedroom is reportedly better for sleeping. So if you have trouble sleeping at night, the National Sleep Foundation says turn down the thermostat. Science finds the best sleep happens in a room that is between 60 and 67 degrees few degrees warmer for babies and toddlers because they don't keep their covers on. Now, when you get sleepy, your temperature starts to drop to help your body go into sleep and eventually REM mode. A warm room prevents your body from reaching optimal sleep temperature. That could cause your restless night's sleep. Well, I'm addicted to sleeping with a fan, but I have yes. always thought it was the noise, not the cool. But now I'm starting to think I it's like a combination cool. of both. Oh, when I was a kid, we opened the windows. Oh, oh you yeah. wouldn't dare. In Georgia? Yeah. <laughs> 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 there were like two good months you could do that, probably in Syracuse at least. But I think I like when it's cold because you can wrap up in a blanket yeah. and that will bring you to that perfect. <laughs> Whereas if the room is too warm and then you put on a blanket, it's just get it off, you know. Well, and I think that's that whole concept about swaddling, mm -hmm. you know, like whether it's a gravity mm -hmm. blanket or whether it's a baby who
who likes to be swaddled. You know, being wrapped has that relaxing, you know, anti-anxiety feeling, but you can't wrap up around here unless your AC is cranked. Yeah, yeah. I always do, because what if somebody breaks in? You know, I want to be all covered with cover. So, <laughs> because so. You, you think they want to look at you instead of rob no, you? I don't want that. <laughs> Take a picture. <laughs> I don't want to be seen, so I cover up just in case somebody breaks Excuse in. Excuse me, if you're going to rob me, please don't look at me. Right, my, I don't have my makeup on. <laughs> please it's don't look. It's in the kitchen. It's in the kitchen. <laughs> well, speaking of sleep, we always hear of famous and successful people who don't seem to need much of it. Many CEOs are what are described as short sleepers. Add star Idris Elba to the list. There's other people on it, Donald Trump, Bill Clinton, lots of the big CEOs of the major companies, male and female. Idris says four solid hours is all he needs to function, maybe with a good 40 minute power nap throughout the day. And again, world and business leaders cite a similar amount of four hours. Oh, this makes me feel bad. <laughs> I need eight. <laughs> that and means I wasn't born to be a leader. <laughs> and there's science behind that. It says some people can function on less than others. I don't need a ton of sleep. No, you. You're I'm more like cheerful. A I'm more cheerful if I sleep eight hours. But we like for you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so does my family. But I mean, I can certainly function on four or five, and I do take naps. Tracy, you don't sleep a lot. I don't. No, no. I'm, I'm good at six. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Six. Six feels luxur luxurious sometimes. Mm -hmm. We had. I remember we had a director in Summerstock who would never sleep until finally the show opened and then you could tell because he just looked a wreck after a good night's sleep. He'd get like a night or two of really sleeping in right. and he just, he yeah. was foggy, it was like I call body. that the hangover. Yeah. Like after, oh. you've heard me say that too after you because I work a lot of off hours. After you do some really late nights, early mornings, weird hours, you can push through it. And that's why I think like the CEOs and the world leaders, I mean they're pushing, they're pushing, mm -hmm. they're pushing. But eventually, Yes. You have to catch up, and that's when that sleep hangover kicks in. And do you do that on Sunday? Do you take, you know? I try to get one, if not two, nine-hour nights on weekends. Yes. Uh, I yes. check out on weekends. If you don't catch up, then you'll fall asleep at the movies or something, which sucks. Yes, right. right. Yeah. Or you're just miserable doing something fun, and that's mm -hmm. when you're like, we need more sleep. So. <laughs>